our next guy was another Jan. Jan is a big name for photosynthesis scientists. Jan Ingenhaus, who kind of followed up on Priestley's experiments. And he added to them. And one thing he noticed was that in order for the plants to actually fix the injured air, they had to be in the light. And not only that, only the green parts of the plants would actually fix the air, not any of the other parts. Like he tried it with the roots and parts that weren't green, and it didn't work. But then he went further, and he set up this nice experiment, you can see there, where he used water plants, and he put them under a funnel so that he could catch any gas that were made by them, because he noticed that when you put water plants in the light, they produce bubbles. And he wanted to know what those bubbles were. Now at this point we'd gotten to a level where you could decide and you could test to tell if something was carbon dioxide or whether it was oxygen. So he put his plants in this nice little contraption and he put them under the light and let them produce bubbles. And he learned a couple things. He learned that in the light, the plants, the bubbles that they gave off were oxygen bubbles. And he measured the amount. And then he said, he put the plants in the dark and noticed they still produced some bubbles, but they were different because in the dark, the bubbles they produced were carbon dioxide. And he also measured the amount there. And in the relative amounts, he saw that the plants produced overall more oxygen in the light than they did carbon dioxide in the dark. And like I said before, only the green parts were making the oxygen, but all the parts, including the roots and the non-green parts, would produce the carbon dioxide. So he realized that plants do fix the air, they produce oxygen, but they can also produce carbon dioxide, so they can injure the air just like the animals do under certain circumstances. So there we go, our next, we now know that light is really important, we know that green is important, what's going to happen next? All right, our next guy. I really can't say his name, so I'm not going to try. Um, De Saussure. I probably screwed that up. All right, so remember back we had our, our very first yawn said that it was water that was making up the plants because that's all he added? Well, this guy discovered that actually it wasn't just water, and the way he figured it out was this. He put his lovely plant in a closed container, and he put carbon dioxide in there. Now, he actually lived down the street from a brewery that would give him free carbon dioxide, which is a pretty good deal, if you ask me. So, he got carbon dioxide, and he put in an exact amount that he measured, and he weighed the plant, and he weighed the carbon dioxide that he put in the container with the plant. As you can see, this is a little later. We're getting up to the 1800s. We had better equipment where we could do things like that. Now, he, since we already knew, from Ingenhouse that you needed sun, he put it in the sun. And after it had been sitting in the sun a while, he measured the weight of the plant and the carbon dioxide. And he discovered that the amount of carbon dioxide went down and the mass of the plant went up, but the mass of the plant didn't go, it went up more than the amount of carbon dioxide went down. So he concluded that the carbon dioxide must be adding to the plant's mass, and then the rest of the addition of mass must be from water. So he discovered that it wasn't just water, it was also carbon dioxide that plants took in and that gave them mass. So it was a combination of the two. And he's French, of course. Voila. Carbon dioxide and water. So now, what is the plant doing? Where is that water and carbon dioxide going? And this is where we get a nice German guy, Julius von Sachs. And he discovered that when you put plants in the sunlight, they would make starch. Um, he was able to figure out how to visualize starch in plant cells. But then, if you put the same plant and kept it in the dark, didn't give it any sun, the starch and the leaves would gradually go away. It would get used up. So, he concluded that this process that happened in the sun, which we are now calling photosynthesis, was making the starch. And then the plant used up the starch 
the thing, the carbon dioxide producing activity that we talked about before that happened in the dark used up the starch. So the light made the starch, the dark used up the starch. The light made the, the photosynthesis made the starch, the respiration used up the starch. So now we have most of our steps here. We have our light, we have our water, we have our carbon dioxide, we have our sugar, because remember starch is just a bunch of sugars hooked together. So we, we kind of have our whole equation. So now we started looking more at the details, because now we're getting close to the 1900s and we're getting more of the nitty gritty. Okay, we got our basic steps, what comes next? 